Welcome, welcome to, uh, what should we call this? Let's call it Kengan Island. Yeah, that's what this place is called now. And you know what? It's pretty safe, actually. It's pretty, it's, it's a pretty good place to stay. Just kidding. Look at this. Does this look safe to you? What about this over here? Does that look safe? And look at this. I don't think that's safe. Now take a look at this. Does that look safe to you? I don't know, we actually know. That's, that's actually okay. That's fine. If you couldn't tell already, this is Lego Fortnite. And I'm gonna spend 100 days in this place. And listen, if at any second you think, wow, this video is pretty good, I invite you to hit the subscribe button, okay? And if you stick around, you will have an amazing time. I always do my best to ensure that. Now listen, that's enough of the great yapping. What do you say we do this thing? On day one, after messing around for a bit, I constructed a campfire, and then I cleared the space around my base to construct the first shack, I should say. It looked okay, but I figured I should add some, some of my own touch, if you know what I mean. So, I upgraded it a little bit. And you know what? I think I really like it like this. The next day I found one of these butterfly sparkly things and I followed it, as anyone would. And the loot was fine, not that great, but you know what wasn't fine? The wolf chasing me afterwards. After running for my life a little bit, I collected some resources to make my first tools, and of course a bed so I can sleep, or not. You can't sleep in this game for some reason. The resource collecting didn't stop though because I still wanted to make some changes to the base. No, just make it look more like a town hall type of thing, you know what I mean? After modifying the base a bit further, I added the lumber mill and a chest for some storage. You know what I think? This might be Elden Ring. And then on the morning of day three, I was ready to take on my first wolf. And this thing almost killed me. But anyway, after defeating the wolf, I constructed the spinning wheel and the grill and added that to my base. And by day three, this is what the base was looking like. I like it. Anyway, I decided to add an extra shack to the base, but this thing isn't gonna stay for long, let me tell you. And then the next thing I built was my town square. This allows me to turn my base into a village. And then that glowing thing appeared again on day four. Knowing it's a trap, I followed anyway. And this time I found a llama, which was cool. But guess what? This time I was mauled by like five wolves. Okay, five is exaggerating, it was one. But still, after this near-death experience, I looted the llama, and the loot was pretty good, mostly consumable stuff, but still pretty good. But I'm noticing a trend with these butterfly things. And then Raptor showed up to my base. As soon as I saw this guy, I thought, sidekick. Every time I go out, he's gonna be the guy I bring. I demolished that extra shack that I had built, and then I upgraded my base to level 2. Or village. It's a village, not a base. Just the base was upgraded to level 2, I figured it was time to leave the shack buildings and build some cabins instead. And then I got bored, so I figured I should fight some skeletons to pass the time. And then at the end of the day, I figured, why not add a second cabin? But the next morning, the cabin was complete. And then it happened again. One of those glowy butterfly things. And knowing it's a trap, I win again. You would too. And you know what? This time, it wasn't a trap. Maybe there isn't some shenaniganerism going on with these butterfly things. Way back, I found an abandoned base. And in this base, I found this box I could move. I knew instantly that something had to be special about this thing. Because while I was carrying it to my base, three enemies appeared to try and kill me. There has to be something special in this box. So I ran it over to my base. And after putting it down, I'm pretty sure it despawned because I completely forgot about it for the rest of this video. And then on day 6, I upgraded my village to level 3. And then, Sunflower moved in. After Sunflower moved in, I figured it would be fitting to build a farm area for some crops. So I chopped down some trees and got to work on this farm area. I didn't really know what crops I was gonna grow at this point, but it just seemed like a good idea anyway. And then on day 7, I was poop collecting. You know, for compost and stuff, so I stood around. Collecting poop. The farm area was taking a little bit longer than I expected to build, but I was making good progress. The next day I decided the farmland was taking way too long than it would probably be worth, so I shrunk it down a little bit. And then I planted some random seeds in there. And then I spent the whole of day 9 building a storage room. The whole idea for adding this build is just to have a place to keep all my chests in one place. And then, pretty soon it was done. And of course, a storage room wouldn't really be a storage room without, well, storage. And then I spent day 10 in the pause menu. On day 11, while I was preparing to explore the next day, it happened again. One of those glowy butterfly things, and once again a wolf attack. I was gonna put down that conspiracy theory, but it's definitely back now. And then this time, instead of a chest, the butterfly became the loot, and it, it's pretty much the same loot every time, not really anything different. And then I continued collecting some meat, so I wouldn't starve on the next day on my exploration. And on day 12, instead of exploring like I had planned to, I got distracted again. And then I figured it was time to raise the spirits back at camp. 
After increasing my storage capacity on day 13, finally time to do some exploring. I never really came across too much, of course the odd wolf here and there, but I did come across an abandoned base with some really mediocre loot. And then I found this thing that looked like it was marking a really important chest, but again, same old loot. Then I came across a bandit camp. I didn't know if these guys were friendly, so I had to sneak my way down there. So for a second I thought they might be friendly, but before I knew it, it was fight time. After I opened up the chest, a couple more of them tried to jump me, but I knocked them out too. I found what looked like a really big abandoned house. I didn't know if anyone would be friendly here, so I decided to sneak my way around. Then I realized it was just one person, specifically Sparkplug, and thankfully she was friendly. But rest is for the weak. So I ventured on and found the desert biome. I was pretty happy to find this. I know sometimes it can take people a while to find this, but here it was right in front of me. It did get dark though, so I figured I should spend the night at Sparkplug's camp just to be safe. And then on day 14, I ventured a little bit deeper into the desert and I found my next opponent. I didn't really want to provoke him right now. I didn't feel ready, but at least I know where he is now. You better get ready because he's going to get knocked out one of these days. And then I found one of these desert roly polies. These things are dangerous, but they are pretty easy to deal with if you use your shield. They kind of just flop on their back and you destroy them. And then I found another one and for some reason I thought this lifeless tree would stop that thing. <laughs> What? I was too scared to go get my stuff back, so I waited out the night. On day 15, I went to go get my stuff back, but these roly polies don't quit, man. They just don't quit. It was time to get my boy Raptor involved in this thing. With us together, there was nothing that could stop us, and I mean that. And then while I was trying to mine some amber, I got eaten alive. Came back on day 16 to get my stuff back, and only to realize that I couldn't mine amber. So it was probably time to upgrade my pickaxe. On day 17, I decided to make the storage room a little bit more efficient by adding a second shelf and then opening up the side walls so I could actually reach the chests on the top. And you know what? I kind of like how it ended up looking. It really looks like a storage shed. And then it was storming like crazy. You think I'm going to be outside in that? Absolutely no way. I got struck by lightning anyway. The next day, I decided to go do some caving to hopefully try and upgrade my pickaxe. Came across a bunch of skeletons that completely destroyed me. But then when I came back, I was pretty shocked to see that I couldn't even mine anything inside the cave. And then on day 19, I ventured out into the desert only to find that I couldn't mine anything in that cave either. And then the next day I learned that what I needed for some upgrades was flex wood. So I spent the day rolling around this boulder to break down the cactus so I could get all the flex wood because I didn't really have an axe that was strong enough to break any of this. And then on day 21, I crafted an upgraded axe because of the flex wood, which allowed me to mine the knot wood in the caves. And then I was finally able to make an upgraded pickaxe that would be able to mine the marble on the walls of the caves. And then I tried to mine the copper, but I still couldn't make a dent to that. Anyway, I spent day 23 collecting all the materials I would need to build a stone crusher and upgrade my workbench. On day 24, I ventured back into the desert because I needed some of those roly poly shells and some sand claws. And then before we knew it, me and Raptor were surrounded. Rounded. And then I spent what felt like 30 minutes trying to chase down this desert wolf. I don't understand why they sometimes run away from you and sometimes they chase you and try kill you. This made no sense to me, but I got his desert claw anyway eventually. Then on day 25, I had to go back, this time to collect the roly poly shells and I hate these things, okay? Let's just establish that immediately. I was able to knock one out, but then my sword broke, so I died. And then I went back on day 26 and got my final roly poly shell. Then I was finally able to upgrade my workbench. And then I spent the next day caving, collecting knotwood. And then I spent day 28 doing a lot of nothing. Anyway, the reason why I needed that knotwood was to create a longsword, which I did on day 29. Oh, and I also crafted a bone pickaxe, which would hopefully allow me to mine the rough amber in the desert. So I went back to the desert to do that, and I got eaten alive. Get this, I went back in the nighttime, and this wolf was gatekeeping. The same wolf killed me again. Thankfully, the next day the wolf was gone, so I was able to climb up one of these mountains and collect some rough amber. And then I spent day 31 collecting marble, and thanks to that, I was able to craft one of those upgraded chests. The green one, to be more specific. And then the next day, I headed out to get some materials to make the diamond cutter. So I had to fight a bunch of these roly polies, and of course, it's the desert, so we got jumped.
and then I found two chests stacked on top of each other, one of which had some pretty good loot. I don't know what I can do with cheese, but I take it. So the reason why I needed the diamond cutter was so I could make cut amber, and with the cut amber, I could make an upgraded axe. And then to make the upgraded pickaxe, I needed some sand wolf claws, and I got eaten alive. I went back to get my stuff on day 34 and of course there was a wolf lurking around but it looked like the wolf was less of my problems because the wolf was destroyed by the tiny scorpions instantly and thanks to the scorpions I got to get that wolf claw for free and then just one more should do it. Yeah. I died. I went back to get my stuff on day 35 and then on day 36, I was able to craft the upgraded pickaxe. Then I spent the evening mining some knotwood in the caves. And then on day 37, I spotted a supply drop in the distance. I went over to loot it and the loot's pretty similar to the llama, I would say. And then I decided to build another storage cabin, except this time it's an actual cabin and not a shack. But on day 38, looking at the inside, I realized it was probably too small to store anything significant in, so I built a second one and then merged them into one giant storage cabin. And then on day 39, I demolished all the separating walls on the inside and the outside, and then they officially became one giant storage cabin. And then later that same day, I upgraded my village to level 5. I forgot to mention this earlier, but the farm was doing pretty good now. I decided to grow frost berries exclusively in the farm just because frost berries let you make frost berry shakes, and those are overpowered. I spent the rest of day 40 inside the cave, and mostly I was there to mine mobs, so that on day 41, I could build a bunch of those upgraded chests in my new storage room. And on day 41, that's exactly what I did. And then on day 42, I remembered that I had an upgraded pickaxe now, so I could mine all the copper and the ruby inside the cave. And I just want to say the skeletons are the worst in this cave. Not only do they do a lot of damage, but they throw dynamite. Anyway, later that day, I decided to make the juicer so I could make the strawberry shakes. Remember those? They're pretty much the only reason why I'm growing frost berries in my garden instead of anything else. And then I spent day 43 mining some copper and blast coal back in the desert cave. And then I figured I couldn't go wrong with raising some camp spirits during the evening. And then day 44 was spent collecting the materials to make the grain mill, which basically allows me to turn a plant into its seed. The next day I used the chest glitch on my weapons when it still worked, and then, thanks to the grain mill, I was able to fill out the entire garden area with frost berries. On day 46 I decided it was time to upgrade my character, and the way to do that was with a health charm. So, I gave Raptor some weapons, and then on day 47, we headed out to the desert to get all the materials needed to make that health charm, which included rough amber, some of those roly-poly shells, and of course some desert clothes. And then by day 48, I made the health charm and I figured I might as well make the cool headed charm too because I had pretty much all the materials laying around in my base. In total, this will raise my health by 6 hearts. And then on day 49, I figured you can never have too much health, so I decided to craft a second health charm, which also raised my health by another 3 hearts, which all together in total leaves me with 12 hearts. And then on day 50, I took the next steps to upgrading my character which included crafting the loom, which, thank goodness I had all the materials lying around in my base. So the loom was crafted, I went out collecting the materials that I would need to make the glider, which would be a bunch of sheep wool and spiders, but of course, when you need something, it's never there, so I couldn't find any spiders. On day 51, while looking for spiders, I found this bandit camp, and they were all camping around this chest, so I knocked each and every single one of them out, because I have way too many hearts for them to handle, every single one of them is destroyed. But the loot wasn't really good inside the chest, so that was kind of a waste of time. I continued collecting all the materials I would need on day 52, and then, on day 53, glider was finally done. Then I went out into my backyard to test it. That works fine for me. And then I decided that day 54 would be the day I'd do my first boss fight. So, for the rest of day 53, I spent it collecting vines so I could feed the vines to the cows and get as much milk as possible, then use that milk to make snowberry shakes. Then, on day 54, fight time. Alright, Raptor. It's time. Look alive. Can I give Jack a shield? Oh. Nah, he can't use a shield, I can tell, I can see. I can see it in his eyes. Then I figured before we go, I would give Raptor a pep talk. Then this old guy tried to join us. Jack, I'm gonna... Let's hide, come on, come here. You ready? <laughs> Look at this old man running over. Jack, listen. Got this, okay? I'm gonna kill this guy. Okay. Now it's fight time. He should be... He should be up here somewhere. Dude, why am I nervous? A little... A kind of... Shh, shh, shh. Jack, shut up! 
I don't really know like the move set of this thing. I I don't know what this thing. Oh my days, man! How can I? Okay, acid's fine. Acid is is fine. It's okay. Ground pound. That's okay. I'm gonna sneak up behind him and <laughs> Jack. Oh my days. Okay, that's that's a lot of damage. Heal up. Dodge, dodge. He's gonna do something. Easy. Dumb freaking. Be look at look at him breaking. Oh no no no! Don't wait. What is happening? Okay, ground pound. Heal up. Pa don't panic. Don't panic. Dodge him. Dodge him. Just like Elvin. Easy. <laughs> Why is this so like? Okay. All right. Okay. Gorilla mode. Look at him going gorilla mode. This freaking ape. Easy. Jack. Jack is not helping. Right. Oh my life to these dodge, dodge, dodge. Easy. Attack, 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 dodge. Easy. Attack, 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 dodge. Okay. All right. Messed it up. I'm not dying to this thing. First try. I'm not dying to this thing. Yeah. Keep breaking down my forest. See what happens. Oh my days. Okay. Oh, Jack died. He just keeps dying. He literally, he genuinely just keeps dying. Easy. Easiest move set to dodge ever. Easy. Okay, that's that might kill me. Move. Move out of the way of that freaking acid thing. He's destroying the entire forest just to get to me. All right, heal up just for safety. Heal up one more time, just in case. Jack is going gorilla mode. Move. Jack is dead. What a useless guy. Easy. Look at the damage this thing caused. I'm the only one still standing. Even the great Jack was destroyed. Why do I? Why do I call Raptor Jack now? What happened? Dude, that's so, that's so, bro. That's. Just, you have no idea how fun that was. Let's go look at the destruction that's been caused to my forest. It's pretty cool that you can, like, use it to collect resources. Look at all this wood, bro. I'm never gonna need wood again. Uh, but Jack, don't get cocky now, because that's, that's like the first guy. There's two more we need to defeat after this one. On day 55, I decided to upgrade my crafting bench to max level. And for that, I needed obsidian, so of course it made sense to go caving. But when I say that I have a deep, deep hatred for these lava caves, I mean it. And that mostly comes from the skeletons, to be honest with you. These guys, they're the worst. If they're not blowing you up, then they're hitting you with their pickaxes and... And look how much damage they take to defeat. I, I hate this. Put together with the fact that the amount of time I spent in this cave was just, just maddening. But eventually I was able to collect all the obsidian I needed and since I was in the cave anyway I figured I might as well get the copper I need to and then of course we also need bright cord to melt all these ores that I'm collecting and then on day 56 I went back to collect some blast core if you've ever had to collect blast core then you know the pain and then I set aside day 57 to collecting some knot root from the caves and then on day 58 I was able to craft the metal smelter and I upgraded my village to level 6. Then, after that, I made my upgraded longsword. The copper longsword, to be more specific. And then I spent day 59 collecting obsidian in the caves. And then I dedicated the next day to preparing for my next fight. And I did that by crafting the inner fire charm. The only problem with that is that I crafted it to help me survive the heat in the desert. The inner fire charm is for the ice biome. So... That was a complete waste of time. And I spent day 61 collecting vines so I could give those vines to the cows and get as much milk as possible. I could make as many snowberry shakes as possible so, you know, I wouldn't die in the boss fight. And also, apart from that, they would also keep me cool in the desert, so that's a good thing too. And then on day 62, I was ready to fight. I spent the entire day searching for this brute in the desert and I couldn't find him. He just didn't show up to work today. But on day 63, fight time. Now, this fight didn't exactly go how me and Raptor planned. Five seconds into this thing, Raptor got turned into a hashtag, and then I got stomped on completely. And then on day 64, I got hit point blank with one of those acid ball things. But on day 65, fight time. For real this time.
On day 66, I figured it was time to do some base upgrades. The thing I did was break the town center and move it from the center to the right. And then, I built this path going through the town. And then I teared down this old shack, cabin, whatever it is, and replaced it for this, uh, just more modern looking version of it. And this building pretty much functions like the old one did. I just keep all the crafting benches and things like that in here. And then I thought it would be pretty cool to actually put the town square inside this building. And then I placed down the foundations for another shack and another cabin. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with these buildings, but I placed them down anyway. Then I built a second farm area on day 68 that I'm never going to use. Then I started construction on the cabin that I placed down. By the time the next day rolled around, the shack was done and the cabin was done. And then on day 70, I realized I don't really have a house, so I built myself the biggest cabin. And then, by day 71, the Jumbo Lodge, as it's called, was complete. And then on day 72, I figured it was time to add some uh, modern lighting on the outsides of the buildings. And then I built a watchtower next to my Jumbo Lodge. Why? It just looks cool, so I built it. I kept working on the watchtower on day 73, and then by day 74, the watchtower was complete. And then I spent day 76 collecting all the materials I would need to upgrade my base up to level 8. And then on day 76, I decided that I was going to build a fly machine. But the first thing I had to do was build the area that the fly machine was going to sit. You know, kind of land and take off from. So, I built these stone steps going up to this mountain. After doing an extremely lousy job with the stone steps, I had to demolish the old building that was sitting up top the mountain. Then on day 78, I went back up there to clear up all the shrubbery and all the mess that was up here. And then I started construction on the base of this uh, landing pad takeoff zone type of thing. I was doing the same thing on day 79. And then by day 80, I feel like my vision was finally starting to take shape with this thing. I tried to add lights onto these pillars, but they just weren't that bright. So at the end of it all, I had to add campfires to the top of this thing. And it kind of made it look like a gladiator ring. Like I'm supposed to fight people on this thing. But you know what? I think it's a pretty good looking launch pad slash landing pad whatever this thing is then on day 81 i came back to the mountain and added some steps just to give it that extra landing pad look and then for some reason i tried to build a watchtower up here as well i don't know what it is with me and watchtowers because i was building this completely by hand as in not using the blueprints by day 83 this is what i had it was pretty ugly so i kind of gave up on it and decided to just use it as a gliding area it works pretty well for that too so i'm not mad about it then on day 84, it was time to build the greatest airship that mankind has ever seen. I'm gonna call it the, the, the airship Excelsior, exactly what it's gonna be called. But then I ran into issues when trying to place the railings. For some reason, they just didn't line up properly. So I ended up with going for a one block sized version. Still called the airship Excelsior though, don't get that twisted. By day 85, this thing had thrusters attached to it. It's almost flight time. And then day 86, I was just collecting some of the materials that I would need to make the balloon to actually fly this thing and preparing with some snowberry shakes then day 87 takeoff day is what i wish it was i actually had to go back into the desert caves to get some blast core so i could make the totem that would help me survive in the snow place and of course these explosive hungry skeletons are everywhere i hate this place i hope i never have to come back here again look at me using lava to traverse this what is this it took until day 89 until i actually had all the blast core i needed and then uh, this new guy showed up to my base so i told him he could move in you know what this might be bear grills anyway Anyway, by the end of day 89, I had two inner fire charms, so my chances of surviving the snow biome is looking pretty good. And then, on day 90, I crafted the epic forest axe, which is the strongest axe in the game right now. Then, on day 91, I was back in those wretched caves, because I figured having only two fire charms might not be enough, so I figured might as well make a third one just in case. And then, on day 92, I had three fire charms on me. And then I spent day 93 collecting milk, so I could make the snowberry shakes. Then. On day 94, flight day. Just kidding. I had to make some copper swords for both me and Jack. And then day 95, takeoff day. Okay. Man, I hope this works like how I think it does. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is dope. Jack. You're late. You're late. I already did that. I already did that. Cut it off. Alright, here goes. You ready, Jack? That's our home right there. But let's go. <laughs> Bro, that had, a, that, had a, that had a kick to it. What is that? It's like a cost. No, it's just some buildings. 
This was all great, but little did we know that we were about to be stranded. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh. Okay. 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 Oh, okay. That's not good. That's not good. You see, the problem is that there's no steering system in the game right now. So once this happens, you're stuck heading in the direction that this thing is facing. So the only option I had was to pop the balloon and try to take us down. And hopefully not die while doing that. Uh, let's hope this doesn't do damage to us. Okay, hold on. Oh, <laughs> uh, that was anticlimactic. I, f I thought we were gonna, you know. After this happened, one thing was pretty clear. We were stuck now, stranded in this place. So we had no choice but to explore until we found some kind of shelter. And we quickly got acquainted with the bugs around the area. These things are insane. Why did it take so- It's just a bug. So much damage to kill a scorpion. Anyway, after exploring for a little bit, we found this abandoned castle. And honestly, we couldn't have found a better place to crash for the night. We were able to keep ourselves warm and away from any kind of lurking danger. And danger is everywhere here. Let me tell you that firsthand. And then of course it was inevitable. Nighttime was gonna hit and I got curious so I went out to fight these skeleton guys. These are not the same like the guys back at home. I had to spend the entire night running from them because the damage they do is just it's too much. I'm pretty sure they chase for a little bit longer too. That's what it felt like. Why are they like w right, this is definitely endgame stuff. Thankfully the skeletons don't stick around once the sun rises and then the next day I spent it collecting the wood around the area because I do need this wood for the next upgrade of tools and then I spent the rest of the day looking for a cave because if there's anything that's gonna upgrade my tools it's probably gonna be everything that's inside the cave. Pretty much took the entire day and I found no caves. Once the sun started setting I ran home because those nighttime guys will it's too much. And then I had no choice but to spend the entirety of day 97 looking for a cave. And while looking for this cave, I came across the snow area roly polies. I decided to fight them because most likely I was going to need those shells that they have. And then, while fleeing from my life from this wolf, I found a cave. I'm out. Oh, there's a cave. There's a cave. Oh, <laughs> this was actually a blessing. I hate you. I hope you die of hypothermia. I'm pretty thankful that the enemies in the cave don't spawn like right by the entrance. I can hear the wolves and the skeletons scrounging around in there, but they all seem to spawn a little bit further into the cave, so I was pretty easily able to see all the resources I needed to collect. One problem, I couldn't collect a single one. I needed to upgrade my pickaxe, so I guess we're heading home. And since we don't have an airship, we're gonna have to head home by foot. I made it home safely on day 98 and then I crafted the obsidian pickaxe which thankfully all the materials I needed were just lying around the base. It was just some obsidian and the wood that I had already collected in the snow place. And this pickaxe would of course allow me to mine the iron that's in the ice caves. And then on day 99 we made our way right back to the ice caves. And I mined as much iron as I could because I don't want to come back here ever again. And since I was there anyway I mined some of the rough sapphire just in case I'd need that too. And then. On day 100, I forged my iron sword, and you know what that means, time to fight the final boss. What you're looking at here is actually day 101, but I'm just gonna call all these next days day 100, just because there's not really a point to count any further than that. Let's just say this first fight didn't go so well. I took a point blank acid ball to the face. And then in round 2, he threw me into his acid thing. And then round three, it was over. My sword did break mid-fight, but my axe was plenty enough to knock this guy out. After that victory, me and Jack headed home. There wasn't really anything else we could find in the ice place after beating that boss. I decided to look around my base for a little bit and I was pretty happy with how things turned out. That was it. My 100 days in LEGO Fortnite. Listen, if at any second you enjoyed this video, I invite you to hit the subscribe button, okay? If you stick around, you will have an amazing time. I always do my best to ensure that. And while you're down there, leave a like on the video. It was actually pretty fun. I have to say, I was pretty uh, shocked by the graphics. I don't think it would look this good, but it looks insane. And I'm a graphics guy, so made it pretty easy to play for 100 days. Anyway, remember to stay hopeful. I'll see you in the next video. Until then.